a lot of the people didn't know, but we were separate neighborhoods. Yeah. Everybody assumed we were the same, and we weren't always from the jump. We rode with Vineland. We got along with Vineland. We did a lot of dirt and work with Vineland, but we ended up getting a green light because even inside, they assumed we were yep, a click. Well, you know, you get a green light. I was getting it once a day. Oh, shit. So um, I, I was in the dorm. I was in Supermax at the time. I was, I, I'll never forget. I was in 614. And, um, you know, I was in the, um, on the bus and, you know, they said, where you from? I'm from some Valley Diablos. They say, you know what time it is, right? I say, yeah, I know what time it is. And I went into the tank and there were homies from Violin. You know, they had the light too. So like we sat in the end, basically just waiting to get our names called. And I remember they, he goes, hey, Loni, Gaile. And, and I start walking to the back and, and the homies are just spreading, spreading like, yeah. like the sea by Moses until I just bang, you know, the yep. first shot comes. Yeah. And let's rock and roll. All right, people, you guys know what it is. It's the one and the only The American Cholo Podcast, broadcasting live and directly from North Hollywood, California. My name is Gil, and I am The American Cholo, and I got a banger for you today, man. I got two homies from the Valle. Yes, sir. Let's first give our next guest. Our next guest is a former graffiti artist, former gangbanger, who has served over 19 years in the California Department of Corrections. He is now a working model, a mentor, and a voice for sobriety and redemption. Please give a warm welcome to the one and only Mohawk Matt. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, dog. That, Finally, it's a was pleasure. That a was that a good intro? Hey, that was a great intro. Oh, I got a little excited. Oh, that's right. I got a little bit excited on that. Did yeah. you, did you, have you been wanting to come on, Matt? Man? I have. Actually, I have. All you have to do is ask. Come yeah, on. but I don't like to sweat you. I know you get a lot of a lot of attention. You know what I mean? <laughs> All you have to do. Well, we have... It, it's like a a double header today, homie. Yeah. Because it's not just you. Yeah. You got one of your homies that you speak about a lot in your story when you talk about your story. I right? looked up to this guy right here when I was a kid. Talk to us. Give him an intro, homie. Who is well, he? Well, this is the one and the only, the bliss one. To eventually, the lonely, the lonely dog right here in the system. The guy who walked alone, took a big, a big chunk of his life away doing something when he was a kid, and and uh, had everybody waiting on his return, and he's finally, finally blessed us, blessed the valley with coming back. Wow, yeah. Mr. Lonely, hey, yeah, it's a pleasure you. having you here, homeboy. Huh, thank, thank you. Now, you just got out, and I mean, when you just got out, it's within the last year, right? Yeah, um, 248 days today. So you count them in days like that, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and I, I mean, I keep my release date. I keep it Oh, let me say 7, yeah. 15, 22. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let the audience know how much time you did. I did 29 years. Jesus. I was arrested at 16. Uh, I was just released at 45 years old. <sighs> Dude, murder. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, it was a murder. Second degree. Second degree murder. Mm -hmm. And they obviously charged you as an adult. Yes, sir. What, yeah. what year was this? This is, uh, ultimately, I went to trial in 94, the beginning of 95. Oh, shit. Remember the Menendez <laughs> brothers case? Oh, yeah, Menendez I, brothers. I was in the same courtroom as the Menendez brothers mm -hmm. at that time. Oh. Yeah. That OJ was in trial at that time. Damn, yeah, that's oh, insane. That's insane, to think about, right? To, to put it in that perspective, he said OJ. Bone that's... Thugs and Harmony had just come out. For the love of money. No. Uh, Thuggish Ruggish Bone? Yeah, Thuggish Ruggish Bone. Damn. I was sitting in, in Silmar Juvenile Hall, and I remember uh, it was Power 106. It was Big Boy. And he they were um, introducing a new group that Easy e brought out on Ruthless oh, Records. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I remember Should hearing To this day, that song just takes me back to staring, that, staring at that room. That's right, because we were in Hollywood. We played it in Heather Delaney's car, and yeah. you were already gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How old were you, were you when you met him, Matt? Oh, we're talking junior high, Holmes Junior High, so maybe, I, I don't, what is seventh grade level? Like 14, maybe? Maybe no. 13, 14 ish. Now, were you guys both taggers at the same time? Were you guys ever I think we were. We were. We already were into that lifestyle. We, we, and I was doing my best to try and get any attention I could from him because he was better than me and he was already fighting he, everybody he, in he, junior high. Is he like a little bit older, you know? Or no, he, he was he's older little, by like, what, like a month or two? He, yeah, just, he yeah. was just a little bit cooler back then. A little, yeah. <laughs> well, I was more shy because I was coming from the private school system in San Fernando oh, to okay. the public school system in Northridge. Yeah. So it was a culture shock. Now, you were actually adopted, right? Yeah, I was adopted, yeah. Uh, at, at what age? Like right out the vagina. Right. An infant. Like, woman had me, handed me over to my parents. Now, did that play a role in, in like, let's say, what how you ended up in, I mean, kind of like, you know, getting I, into I, the street life and all that, you think? I don't think so. I mean, I grew up lower middle class, Mission Hills. Um, parents both worked. I, I don't think that was it. I think I just was drawn I watched Boys in the Hood in New Jack City one too many Juice right. with Tupac. I watched those movies too many times, and I was just drawn that, to that, that life. To those movies, yeah, right? I can't say that I had a hard life because my parents gave me everything. How about you? Um, I think yeah, I was I was adopted ultimately at nine years old by my grandparents. Oh, you guys were both, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, oh, and that's wow. why it's uh, you know yeah. um, when I was doing my time, I was studying you know psychology and stuff like that. And when I came across the term trauma bonded, it's what 
made me think about him like we found each other like running yeah. the streets our stories were so similar we're in search of the same things we're running from the same you know hurts and pains in life wow yeah. dude that's a, a, that is crazy and that's and that's a crazy bond and it's, it's amazing that you guys you know still are connected after all these yeah. years because a lot of times man after that much time people just kind of forget about you the day the day i got out i heard i heard yeah. a, i heard a car bumping from about two blocks away i seen the stolen <laughs> license plates he pulled up on me yeah now let me ask you you're 16 years old were you 17 by the time? I mean, it doesn't really matter. 16 or 17, when the when the gavel comes down and says, you know, Mr. Lonely, even though you know, I'm sure they said your first and last name, you are being uh, committed to the California Department of Corrections for how much time? They tell you 20 years to life. Yeah, I was 17 when I when I when I took that life sentence. Are you even fathoming the severity of this right now? Or are you still a young guy thinking? Ah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was a mixture because you know I had my whole family in the courtroom. You know, you I uh, my mom let out. Like a cry that I could still hear in, in in my mind today. So I was aware of that, but I was so entrenched at that time that it, it was a badge of honor. Like to walk back into that courtroom, we were in Van Nuys Court because um, the Northridge earthquake had knocked out the San Fernando Court at the time. That's right, remember that? The shit he brings up is crazy. And they I were know. hanging everybody. Everybody yeah. was was getting. Well, that was the getting, era of crash unit. Yeah, yeah. that was the era yeah. of the crash well, unit. That was, in the, that was a peak, brother. Yeah. This is '94. We're talking yeah. about. It's active. Yeah. Active. It's active. I tell kids You're of the of the of the primo you and, and the AK. You, know, you wouldn't <laughs> understand the level that we went through watching and then getting involved in in the nineties in the I don't LA but the Valley too. We had our own history and our own struggles. It was active. From no, you had to. Like, yeah. I would tell people on a Friday night, you're gonna go to any hood. Minimum, you're gonna get 10, 20 guys out there. That's Absolutely. minimum. Minimum on the block. We're talking <laughs> and you know exactly where they're at. And we're on the yes. block with certain attire. You're yeah. not not knowing who's wearing who with, no. we all look the with same. Crocs and skinny it, jeans. It was it was a yeah. uniform. And yes. apart from the uniform, yes. part of the part of being a gangbang in your hood, you had to post up. You were posted That's up. That's the difference nowadays. Yes. Nowadays you're not posted up. Yeah. You go no. to so many hoods, it's very hard to find people. Yeah. You'll probably find the homies even here you'll find the homies for a little bit and after that yeah. let's get out of here you, might you get, get disciplined for being absent for too many days oh yeah, yeah. yeah. that was a yeah. fact that yeah. was definitely on a, on a, a fact. sunday meeting homie all right yeah. Yeah. this boy come around yeah. give this fool a hit, hit, yeah hit the circle yep. homie you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so let me start with you how well how did you go from graffiti into diablos the hood okay so it kind of evolves revolves around what he did what him and one of our other friends did, another white dude named, named our homeboy Ghost, he, uh, they did something at a party. It caused a, a steamroll, a, 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 a rolling down the hill, so to speak, of a bunch of action. So we, right. we now have to join a gang because if anybody knows the 90s, that was the time of the Taggers had a green light. You know, we were getting shot at by gang members. Cops were terrorizing us. Business owners were attacking and harassing us. It's not easy like these guys. These guys got it easy today doing graffiti. Right. Yeah, for Back sure. then it was it was on the jump, on the fly. We're moving and grooving. We don't have the luxury of collecting supplies and sitting there and painting your business. We're getting shot at, chased, arrested. So when they did whatever happened with them at a party, we were catapulted into, well, now we got to join a gang. Now, mind you, our tagging crews got like five, six Mexicans, one black guy, a bunch of, and then like, I don't know, eight or nine white guys. So we're a multicultural group of kids from Mission Hills, Granada Hills, Sun Valley, uh, uh, North Hills, where these guys are gone, the rest of us, a few of us were left on the street to to decide, well, we got to join a gang quick because now we're on the hot seat. We did kill somebody. People are looking at us. I My father had a house in Sun Valley where uh, he used to work at Crown Disposal. Remember Crown Disposal? Uh, the city dump. Yeah. My dad was the plant manager. My uncle was best friends with Tom Fry, and he was the the co, co-owner of that facility. So yeah. my dad ran that plant. So... Uh, I utilized a bunch of my other homies from a tagging crew called CFK, and they were friends with the Diablos, and we just kind of moved and slid into that. Now, mind you, back then, my neighborhood, the Diablos, they weren't really anything. They weren't really, not, not that they, they were always something, don't get me wrong, but they weren't big. They weren't established. They were just like GTA Street Diablos. They had a green light. They were they were just like a gang on the street. Now, where, where did Diablos actually start off? Because when I was, well, for people who don't know, yeah. my hood when I was young, we would not get along with Diablos just because yeah. of violent boys, and it was Stone Valley. Yeah. And back then, it was more of hoods were kind of city based. Yeah. Whereas now, everybody's everybody killer. Back yeah. then, like hoods from Sun Valley would get along with 
even though they say they don't, they violent will get on with with like Radford Street. Yeah. Radford was in North Hollywood. They claim yeah, that's some isn't that weird? We always some, tripped on that. You guys they, are in North Hollywood. They claim some. No, but no. now they claim North Hollywood. Yeah, now they do. Right? Okay. Uh, yeah. It's cool to claim North Hollywood now. So, yeah. So Violet would be with Radford. Uh, they would also get along with like Boys from the Hood. Boys from the mm, right. Those they, they would also yeah. get along with 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 Sanford. Yeah. And then we would get along with like. Pacas, yeah. you know, Clanton, Van Nuys. So it was almost like cities against cities. And it was then. just yeah. us. And right? it was really just us, Sol Trece. We had Orcas, right. Orcas. Brick City, Northside Criminals, and uh, and Diablos. Right. Kind of. And and we were we were off on our own because, like I'm saying, all these all you guys were heavily established. Yeah, you, guys were, point, you guys yeah. were, were uh, official nope. Southsiders. You guys were on the books. And we're deep. We were just Diablos. Coming from being GTA Diablos, a mixture of stoners, white boys. So what year... What year um, where, okay, where did Diablos come from? The actual original name of the neighborhood. It came from I. I want to say one of my. I, I'm. I'm assuming. I remember some of the history. One of my older homeboys was from that biker gang Diablos, I think, and they just took the name and they became GTA Diablos. And what because was the, the GTA was like Grand Theft Auto. Well, because Diablo? yeah, like all Tigers? my homeboys. Well, in the valley back then, all my homeboys' dads used to work at the the General Motors plant before they shut it down in Panorama City. Oh, I remember that. Place. So if you needed a car stolen, the only place you're coming is Sun Valley back then. We have access oh, yeah. to pick your park, yeah. all the the junkyards. Yeah. You came to us for stolen and cars. You, you can leave the car there for two weeks and nobody's towing it. Nope. Yeah. And you're, everybody in the valley's driving around with 86 Monte Carlos, Chill luxury day, sports, man. Regals, all tagged. All tagged. All tag. Tag. Come on. All Engine tag. blocks, doors, the, the wheel wells. We're getting all... We knew how to... That was my homeboy's job. That's what they did. So then how many of you guys ended up like morphing into the Diablo gang? So basically, I would say my whole tagging crew minus like five. We had a couple like my homeboy Ghost. He chose to stay white in the system, became a skinhead. We had a couple. Uh, our other main head decided to just go off onto his own and make DYP its own alleged gang, which right. didn't really work out well. Um, uh, Brian was already busted, so we were tr communicating with him, keeping us, keeping him in the loop, and he stayed with us. The rest of us just got jumped in that were left on the street. A total of like maybe ten of us. All right, and how and how big was Diablos then? Like, they were small, bro. They, they were. were they, we're talking. I, I'm gonna assume like maybe they had sixty. Heads total. Okay, but yeah. committed, a committed, committed. No, a committed yeah, sixty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd rather, yeah. I'd rather have um like a committed sixty than a thousand. Yeah. No, I get that. segregated sure. dudes. Yeah. yeah, just taking up room. No, they were, they yeah. were, they were very well known. Um, I think when they, when I first started hearing about Diablos, I always assumed, and it took me a couple years to figure out. I thought they were like violent boy Diablos. Everybody said, that. and you know there what? Was I know it's funny. Strong relationship. There well, was, there was, no, we had a strong. I'm talking a strong relationship, but. A lot of the people didn't know, but we were separate neighborhoods. Yeah. Everybody assumed we were the same, and we weren't. Always, from the jump, we rode with Vineland. We got along with Vineland. We did a lot of dirt and work with Vineland, but we ended up getting a green light because even inside, they assumed we were yep, a click. Well, you guys claimed Sun Valley. Yeah, and so we had a green light for years for literally... Well, not doing nothing. Well, I was in the county. Yeah, well, he was in the county. <laughs> Worst time. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So Just coming into the county. I yeah. had just turned 18. But at this point, when you're coming in, you're coming in as part of a tagging crew because you yeah. haven't morphed into Diablos, right? So how does how do you work that out uh, when you're in there? No, when when um we became Diablos, I... I and that's, you just said that's what I represent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, he did. So when you walked in the county, you were already representing Diablos. Yes. So, yeah. so the homies yeah. came in. So because you ran, you were on the south side. Yes. Yeah. This yeah. guy is running wood. Yeah. Which, which yeah. is, yeah. Which is kind yeah. of funny. So it is. Let, let me. I mean, no. Let me ask you. So how did that green light affect you when you were in there? Um, you know, so you know, you get a green light. I was getting it once a day. Oh. Shit. So um, I, I was in the dorm. I was in Supermax at the time. I was. I, I'll never forget. I was in six fourteen, and um, you know. I'm new to the dorm, so the, you know you come up and you know you have two options: you can roll up your property and leave, or you can go under there and take your medicine. Now that was the only option for me. I, you know, I'd go under there every morning after breakfast. Um, it, it'd be a three-on-one. They said when he hits the ground, you know, we're not we're not into like pissing on the grass. Him. Yeah, yeah. like we're we're trying to grow people. So I took it. I took it for a week straight, and. At, you know, after you get it, you go and function in the dorm. So, like, I'm getting to know these people, these right. homies right here, and we're friends. So, the pun the punches started getting a little bit easier. They started going from the face to the body until ultimately they said, "Man, this this fucking youngster's got heart right here." And and I was good in that dorm. Yeah. I ultimately, yeah. um, you know, it was earned said, your respect. Yeah, but when I went to court, no, that's another story. That's a whole so other the story. holding tank. Like I, 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 met, I could tell an occasion. You know, I remember. Uh, you know, I was in the um, on the bus, and you know, they said, "Where are you from?" I'm from Sun Valley Diablos. They say, "You know what time it is, right?" I say, "Yeah, I know what time it is." 
And I went into the tank, and there were homies from Vineland. You know, they had the light, too. So, like, we sat in the end, basically just waiting to get our names called. And I remember they, he goes, hey, Lonely Gaile. And, and I start walking to the back, and, and the homies are just spreading, spreading like, yeah. like the sea by Moses until I just, bang, you know, the yeah. first shot comes. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that, would, that was a character-building moment that um, I wouldn't change today. So I um, take it you didn't like going to court. <laughs> Yeah, Plus, nobody wants to. Go, yeah, go, you're, I'm in pre-trial with a with yeah. my whole eye, you know, bro. shut, you know, beat down for sure. Now, did that? Ever, how long were you fighting your case for? I fought my case for just under a year. About, about now, throughout that months. whole year, when you're going to court, were you having issues, or did it finally like you kind of knew everybody in the system? At yeah, that point? after a while, um, you know, my name became known. And um, they knew that, you know, I was committed to, to who we are and what we That's are. Right. And, yeah, so it, when, when you're that committed, it makes it a little more difficult to want to. How, do, how does that make you feel hearing your, your homie here that you've known for so many years that did so much time talk about how he was getting, like, I mean, pretty much beaten down by the homies, man. It sucks. It sucks. It does. It's, something that, it's a struggle that I have. He knows because I talk about it. I, ask him. I talk about this daily. The choice I made. Because my county journey went a completely different way than him. And talk to us about your county journey. I, I got arrested for a possession of drugs. Remember back in the day when you, we could get a felony for a nickel a week? That was a difference, Holmes. Yeah. We yeah. could get, I got a, I was, I, I made the unfortunate choice one day of me and my homeboy Chubbs from Dallas. I smoking crack at Branford Park in Arlita. Good old crack, huh? Good old, I'm talking crack, <laughs> homie. I'm not talking cocaine. I'm talking crack <laughs> on a pipe, <laughs> going to Columbus Street on Sepulveda. <laughs> Buying crack with Brillo. I'm talking pookie You're crack. You're talking about crack. Fresh crack. off Orion let's Street. Free, let's yeah. just not even call it cocaine. It's crack. Okay. Oh, it was crack, I was right? smoking crack, and I got arrested for a piece of crack. I got a felony. I'm in the county. I was... Look, any kid that's barely 18 to tell you they hit the county and they're not scared, they're full of shit. Yes, yeah. I'm talking 9,500. And let me add, too, when, when yeah. I came into, I'm fresh, I just did a year in juvenile hall, and yeah. I lifted weights every day for that year with, like, out a single day off. And, yeah. you know, that's the age when your body's really growing. Yeah. So, like, I, I, I had that confidence, you know. Yeah. I, I, I had a, strong. Yeah, I had a good swing on me. Uh, yeah. Not to say I didn't get my ass whooped every time, but, yeah. yeah. So it's easier. I wasn't coming off the streets off crack. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. Which so, is, so it makes a big difference. I was, I, I was, uh, um, you're scared. I hit the county jail back when everybody yeah. gets your shit and you're up them escalators to John Wayne to 9500, the Thunderdome, where you walk in this building, mind you, Oof. you got phones on the wall. You look over to your right, you see nothing but homies, 60 blacks, whites. Maybe eight whites. Let's keep it real. There's about eight white boys in bunch there. Of and a bunch of men. We're talking yeah, Vikings. Yeah, yeah. Gangsters. Yeah. This is when it really hits you yeah. and you're like, Jesus Christ. And you can feel the uncomfortable. If anybody's been to 9500 before they converted it, that feeling. I was there. It's yeah. in, you know the feel, It's <laughs> intense. Yeah. And mind you, I'm fresh 18 and I'm walking in there with a roll and a fish kit like... I mean, the, that exhaling feeling, I'm like, Jesus Christ, dog, this is a whole new... What did, am I, I, what did I walk into, right? Yeah, well, that's also, all these emotions are going through my head. Okay. What did we do? I'm a fucking white kid. I'm fucking, I'm now from Diablos. We have a green light. So the, I remember a dude, I think his name was Warrior from SGV, some big old biker looking white boy, long hair, is kind of pretty looking, but he's a, still big. He's like, walks over and he's like, because back then, if you saw me, you couldn't tell if I was Mexican or white. Right. Blue eyes, shaved head, some tattoos. I come in wearing fucking. You came in with your shoes. I had well, Cortez. Well, well, back then, the 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 weddles would dress like the essays out yeah. here. Yeah, even the woods in, in, in Chatsworth, exactly. Canoga Park. They was part of our story. That, that's yeah. what I tell people. Such, I'm white, but I grew stilo. up with Mexicans. It's I'm our, one of a few. Yeah, it's a Chicano stealer. We yes, and I go in the dorm, stilos. and this dude tells me, "What race are you, dog?" And I'm like, "I'm white." He goes, then get the fuck over here. These are our bunks. This is our row. We're over here. I'm like, "All right." So I go with him. Mind you, I I have a thousand senses going off at this time you're trying to look there's dudes in the shower dude some dudes getting beat up under the gunner there's you remember they got the tower the windows are up there the the cops in the glass windows the showers in the back right there dudes getting beat up i'm watching all this goes on so my i'm sensory overload so i just go with them and that's where my journey went right there it, it wasn't like i purposely planned a lot of people a lot of people give me shit like oh you betrayed us blah 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 and i'm like no i didn't it was it was a split second it wasn't because i was scared of a green light it wasn't none of that it just happened to be at that moment, I, 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 my race, well, my race is white. Right. I've never had a struggle with my race. Yeah. I, I love who I am, and I'm proud of it. But I let everybody know, but I also grew up with Mexicans. And where are you from? Well, I'm from Diablos, dog. But I am white. 
Now that began right at that moment when I said I'm white, I walk right with them. Yeah, but what people don't understand is when you pick the the white ramfla in the county jail, yeah. you're not picking the strongest ramfla. No, you're not. It's it's, 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 it's vicious, especially homie. during that. time. Especially, especially during that time. Now, when you get to prison, things change a little bit better for us right. in our favor. But but at that moment in the county jail, like I said, there's probably six to eight white boys in a row of bunk beds in the back, and it was it was intense. And so, at that moment, we were already having trouble with the blacks in there. So it was just and mind you, there's six to eight white boys. About 60 blacks. So did you just end up like blending in with the with the woods in there and nobody brought the issue of you being from some Well, I, I had Diablos across my stomach and it was weirdly enough, nobody asked me about it. It just didn't become an issue because there were so many other issues going on. But but like I always tell my homeboys in the hood, never once did I never not represent you. I've always been from Diablos. I'm from Diablos. No yeah, one will, I won't allow nobody to take that from me. But my race is white. Now to me... We weren't Southsiders when I got jumped in. We were in the midst of a green light being attacked from every neighborhood on every angle in the valley. It was a yeah. it was a journey to get down Laurel Canyon just to San Fernando where we were safe. Yeah, for sure. And then to go through the other way to Laurel Canyon past you guys going back this way to Lancashire, yeah, people, we're getting attacked. People, people don't realize don't understand that, we had a green light. Yeah. We're being attacked by 90 neighborhoods in the San Fernando Valley. Pacoima alone has, what, 30 clicks. To get through Pacoima is amazing. And Pacoima's right there next yeah, to Yeah, they're right on, on the borderline of my yeah, hood. Yeah, they'll, go, so, they'll hit you guys before they yeah, hit so I, I, I used to talk to them like fr from the county at the time, yeah. and I remember them saying, like, we're Dog. covered in gunpowder. Oh, yeah. Dude. Bro, yeah. I mean, yeah, bro. So it, it was never like I always tell people. I've always said I'm from Diablos, but yes, I'm a white boy. Yep. To me, it wasn't betraying. It wasn't any of that. It's just this is just how it is for me. No, that's just the the way that your journey ended up going. Yeah, and if you can ask a couple of my boys, I mean, I I, I put in work, dog. I put in work. So say what you want, but but I, I'm now, I'm one of those dudes that'll be right there. How many? How much time had you been in when when he pulled up in the county? Were you there when he pulled up in the county? No, we never crossed paths. Never. I, you already uh, we out? were in the system I, at the same I time probably, a lot. I, I probably caught the chain by that point. You probably did, yeah. yeah. How did you feel that you know you ran with the homies and he ran with the woods? Did that yeah, ever? Um, come I actually up? I actually didn't find out till like years later, but um, I I never had a problem with it. I don't I don't have a problem with it today. I know what this dude is about. Like I've seen what he's capable of, you know, a, a lot of the stuff that I hear a lot of people, you know, on YouTube and various places talking about, like I've witnessed, I've seen him do it. Yeah. Allegedly. Alle yeah. Alle <laughs> Allegedly. No, it's, it's just, it's just, so a I know his heart. Like I know his heart and I know his head and I get it. Like I know, um, coming it's a in, struggle, bro. Gil, the, it's the a struggle. Yeah. In, it's a struggle to grow up with Mexicans and to be one of maybe four or five white boys with him, but also to be like, Dog, I listened to Depeche Mode and shit like that. Like, you understand the struggle? You understand this? My, family, like, my yeah. family dynamic was different from him, too. Yeah. So I grew up in a house with, like, all Chicanos, like, from Sotel. Yeah. My stepdad was from Sotel. His two um, sons, who are my age, I grew up with, are from Venice. Oh, shit. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Shout out to the West Side. So yeah. you grew up in the culture, right? Yeah, so um, my deal was from Culver City. I mean, but, uh, but that time, pretty much, if, if, if you're a, a widow in this certain part of the valley yeah. or even that certain part of the way, you, that's where you're growing up in, dude. That's Damn. that's where you, that's yeah. where you're at. And Damn. the danger part you were talking about, yeah, that is so true. To me, like over here, as soon as the railroad tracks come in from Tahunga that way, yeah, like, no, nah, I mean, I'm not going over there. And yeah. if I am going over there, I'm rolling with a strap. Are we talking about Jokerstown? No, even no, even right here, going over like Tahunga. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the Costco's yeah, 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 at? Yes, yes, as yes, soon yes. as you go over those railroad tracks, you yeah. know you, you're going into fucking enemy territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, we're not going to those liquor stores. Yeah, we're not going to those stores. Yeah. If you don't go to a party with it, you're gonna get lit up. And, oh, and it would happen all the Lancashire time. Lancashire was treacherous for us. With it. The Métis Street is right there on, was it, Cohasset or Victory? Yep. Right by the swap meet? Man, that to us was treacherous. Yeah, for Boys sure. Boys from the hood on Sherman Boys Way? Boys on Run oh, Yeah, on Hind yeah. Street right there? On Hind Street. Oh. Run me locas. Run me locas. Oh, shit. I, I, yeah. they, they were one of the, I think probably the few real female gangs out here in the valley, yep. man. Yeah. yeah. And, and they were with it. They you were know what's funny? Somfit had a lot of females, but I think they eventually phased them out. Well, They, they were, had a lot of them. Yeah, they, I mean, every hood had somewhat of females in yeah. it, they were like one of the very few established. The yeah. ones that I know for a fact came and did a couple of drive bys on us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Established group of females. <laughs> Let's keep yeah. it real. I heard yeah. about them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, they, they came yeah. And busted on us. Uh -huh. So you guys' stories is is amazing because it's almost like I, I see you guys. It's almost like you guys are brothers, and you yeah. guys just had the different journey in prison, right? Yeah. Yeah. So how was the county running as a wood, dude? Because when I was in there, my first, my very first experience in the county jail was I go in there with a homie from Pacas. And we roll up in there, and I think I think they had the green at the time. He's yeah. kind of like, no, back then, you know, fuck, it was crazy. Yeah. Um, and he's all fucking like jittery. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. all jittery, but at the yeah. same time, he sees a he sees a he sees a widow, right? He sees yeah. a widow, and he's like, and I'm 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 fresh. I'm 18 years old, right? Yeah. And then he sees him right away. 
Hey, what size shoes are those? Oh. The guy tells him, give me your fucking shoes. The guy's like, what? I ain't gonna tell you again. Give me your fucking shoes. I'm gonna fuck you up. And this guy's like, no. Oh, dude. I mean, he wasn't uh, no gangbanger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy. He was just yeah. like, it's a regular white guy. Oh, dude. Yeah. And I just saw it. I'm like, what um, the fuck? Um, and that's when I started seeing, oh, shit. Dude, Woods in there at that time. We had it bad, dog. It had it bad, homie. Yeah. Didn't have the numbers. <laughs> didn't have no love yeah. from anybody. You know, yeah. I'm sure if you knew somebody, how was, how was your experience in the county? It was rough. It was constant fighting, constant turmoil. But, like, I was uh, fortunate enough to be around a good group of really strong whites. And uh, there wasn't many skinheads back then. You know, they're real popular and dominant now. But back then, it was just white boys, bikers and woods, you know, meth cooks and shit like that. You know, some hills have eyes type white boys. <laughs> you know, some of them people live out in acting type motherfuckers. Right, right. But, but there was a bunch of us that were strong. And I learned a lot of really cool shit from some... For a, let's just say a particular group of white boys that secured some safety for the rest of us whites. That's right. I'm asking, yeah. yeah, a lot of people don't see that, man, because that's, that's yeah. exactly what it is, right? Yeah, and again, like, people don't get that we networked when whenever you, we had your guys back, and and, for, and despite a lot of the bullshit, you guys had our back for the most yeah, part, Yeah, for too. sure, yeah. for sure. It's just the county jail. Just another yeah, thing. county jail is its own universe. <laughs> it's its own universe. I tell people a lot, the minute you catch that great goose upstate, everything changes again. You have to go through another constant learning process. It becomes definitely more sophisticated. More point, sophisticated, so yeah. a lot more to learn. Yeah. So what What was your, what was probably one of the worst things you experienced in the county jail? And what was it like one of the worst experience things that you that, that sticks to you that you experienced in prison? Um, in the county jail, I mean, obviously, that's where I got my life sentence. But um, I, there, there are no, I mean, riots, you know, things like that. But in talking to the point we were just talking about, like with the white boys, it was funny. I'm 18 and when I was sitting on my bunk, I just came out the shower, I got my chocolates on, I'm drying off. And sort of like an older white boy came in, like had no kind of gang affiliation. He wasn't a wood. He just, I don't know, maybe he was there for drunk driving. I don't know what. Yeah. But his he, big old purple, like you could tell he just got whooped on. He walks up to me and he goes, hey, you mind if I sit down right here? I go, yeah, go ahead. And I go, what happened to your eye? And he goes, the beaners upstairs just huh. jumped me. Not knowing. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, set my, I, I set my shower and I looked up and I said, damn. And I turned around and I gave this dude an uppercut like from the floor all the way to his chin and <laughs> launched him. <laughs> and, and, you know, from there, the homies are on top of him beating at the end. They're like, what happened? Brian, he thought he was safe. That's horrible, dog. I know. That's horrible. I know. Man. He got an all you can for free right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got an all you can <laughs> you tiger all uppercut. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you got to test that one out, huh? Oh, God. It, oh, uh, that's that's that world. Yeah. Right? But I'm it 18 is. at the time. Like I'm, yeah. I'm I'm immersed in it. Like I was loving it. Like you know, South Sides. I love the workout. I love going onto the roof with the fellas. The regiment. Like, the whole. I yeah. lo loved it. I loved it. Now, how many years were you? in the system when you started thinking or did you ever start thinking that man this you know this you, you start getting older you start yeah, thinking different definitely. how many years were you in there you started maturing more and saying wait a minute man i i, I, I don't want to do this or were you still like fuck it, let's keep rolling yeah so i mean i i rolled that mentality all the way for almost two decades Shit. and i was in kern valley state Shit. prison at the time um they called that a super 180 it was four yards it was yeah. um now it's it's a lot of s and y there but um it was four like fully Back active then. 180 yards and um i got validated that time as a, a prison gang associate this is in 2008 right so um i'm in the shoe i'm done um at the time the motto the only way to get out of the shoe was snitch parole or die Brief, right yeah so um I was in Pelican Bay for a year. They sent me down to Corcoran, and I stayed in Corcoran for about seven years. Shit. Man. Now, um, during that time period, it was in 2011. It was December. My grandmother died. So my grandmother is Sheila. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, oh. she she was the love of my life. She's who adopted me. Like that's your mama. Yeah, we oh, wrote. Man. We wrote. Um, I have an amazing mother, you know. Um, by the way, too. But at my grandmother, it's just that 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 was that was that bond. That was that bond. That yeah. was the the home girl I had always been looking for my whole life. And she know? was the one that would yeah write you, bitch you, like all that right yeah. or die. Yeah. So when she uh, passed away, um, you know that was uh, one of the worst circumstances I, I've ever experienced in my life. My greatest fear happened to me. So I remember thinking like, what am I gonna do? You know, um, and I decided I made a decision to to live a life in a way that would make her proud. You know, yeah, and um, I just slowly 
begin Started that process. Out. Yeah, I begin that process of um, just discovering myself and my cell and um, just trying. It's, it's not easy, you know, like um, I, I was still definitely, uh, you know, a fully active homie immersed in it. But I was trying to find a way where I can honor my grandma without um, like maybe kind of like retiring with honors type of thing. Yes, like, of course. People yeah, understand how yeah. important that is at times. Because I, yeah. I, I love, I, these are my camaradas. Like, I love them, you know, and, and, and I'm going and to I'm, I'm stick with them. Yeah, you're killing or dying for this shit. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I care about them, you know. So I, I, I was working that balance. What worked out as well, too, is my age. I'm already validated. I had, you know, I had paid some dues. So, like, I had some respect. They knew where my heart was at. So it made it a little easier just to, like, just to chill a little bit more. You, you got to put in that work and find myself like yeah. th this, this person that I'm trying to be who I didn't know who it was yet. How many years did you end up doing the shoe? I did nine and a half. Jeez. Yeah. Is that, is it by yourself or you guys have a, a roommate? So, so, um, in Corcoran at that time, about 80% of, um, like, like the Sureños were single cell at that time. I, you know, the, you know, the IGI, the, the, the gang unit, like were really petty. So, uh, you know, they would, put people single cell like in attempts to break them like the whole mind game like i get it that that was their job um so the last seven years i was single cell in the same cell how do you how do you keep your, your sanity in there man what what, um, what what was a what was a, a typical day because i i would say it's almost like groundhog day every day is pretty every much day that's a good way to put every it every day that's why time goes so fast like i remember looking up one time and like five years had gone by because you wake she up said, in the morning waking up so fast five yeah. years i mean you wow. get your lunch uh, they take you to to yard. You get your showers. Like everything. What's is yard the same. like out there? I mean, it's it, dog cage. Yeah, there's there's 26 cages in front of um you know every yard. Shit. And it's tough. Like uh, you know, there's dudes that have been back there like 20, 30 years. That's crazy. And yeah, like it, it was a really um, it, it, like you know, I would say it was 99 percent mental yeah. and 10 percent physical. What are you are you reading back there? Are you I, yeah? What, how do you keep your? I mean, yeah. Um. So I. I you know, as a homie anyways, and, you know, as a time I viewed myself as a soldier in the army, I had structure in my life. So um, no matter what happened, whether I had something to do or not, and you never have nothing to do, you know, I'd wake up, I'd roll my mat up, I'd tie it up with the sheets, and I'd put it in the corner. You know, I'd do my workout for, for two to three hours. I'd take my bird bath in the sink. I'd read for four hours. I'd write for two hours. You know, uh, I'd meditate and say prayer and... um go to sleep and, and, and do it all over again. It was a miserable existence. I survived it. And I, I, there was no, um, no thriving. It just, I survived it. Do you ever, and this is, I mean, I, I, but I got to ask it. Do you ever break down and cry in there, man? Absolutely. Many times, many times. When my grandmother passed, I cried for about 30 days straight. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Different that's... kind of teardrops. Like they, they were bigger than the average teardrop. Yeah. Painful. Um, you know, I cried for my nephews. Uh, I have three nephews who, uh, like, I adore these guys. Like, I remember when they were born, all three of them, my sister would send me pictures, and I, I would have to turn the picture around to see who's Adrian, who's Jacob, and who's Chris, because I didn't know who they were. Adrian on the left, Gosh. like, and I'm watching them grow up that way. You, you lost, uh, I mean, you lost a good chunk of your life. Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, obviously somebody had to have passed away for you to do this. For yeah, you to get yeah, that much time. Yeah. So um, do you think your time was way over excessive? Do you think uh, something else should have happened to you? What do you think now that you've come out of this journey and you're out here and you're being productive? So when I went to the pro board, they asked me that question. Um, you know, I had been uh, positively programming for I, when, when I got out, I had about eight years without a write up. Um, you know, I had uh, college degrees. I was doing self-help therapy. They said uh, so I was a, I was a pretty good uh, convict, you know. So they said, do you deserve to get out? I said, I, I'm not deserving of anything. Like, I took a life. And, and, I, and I'm extremely remorseful for that. That's what drives me to be the best man that I can be. So I don't feel like um, I'm even entitled. Like, I'm at the mercy. Like, I'm here asking for mercy today, and I'm trying to earn my place back in a free society. So I, I don't feel I'm deserving of anything. Even today, I have to wake up every day. His story is my story. Right. You know, as terrible as it was, our lives are intertwined. So I have to wake up every day and earn my place in this world and, and advocate for this person who uh, did not deserve to have his life taken. How, how old was he at the time? Uh, he was 18 years old. So you were two kids, man. Yeah. Two yeah. kids. Yeah. Yep. That, I mean, completely changed each other's, not just your guys' lives. I mean, both of your guys' families. Were well, and it steamrolled. Like I, I've told him before when he got home, I finally got to have some that conversation. That conversation where like, you know, this steamrolled into my family 
my choices, what happened networked into like, it ricocheted into the society. And we all, into, the community. We were, yeah. into the community, into all of our lives. Our, we were all forced into, like all of these things probably wouldn't have happened. We could all still be graffiti artists maybe if that would have happened. Maybe we all yeah. would have had jobs. We were operating but out we, of desperation. Yeah, just uh, every but that day. moment catapulted the rest of us off of what he did into 20,000 other wrong choices. And, and, and other choices of other hoods. Of other, yep. it's just, and, that, and, that's and now just we've been forced into affecting other people throughout the process of gang life as well. Now, you did a good chunk of time yourself, yeah. right? Now, how much time did you do all together? About 19. Three different terms. Man, yeah. Dude. But I was never home for like more than 90 days. I think 98 days. Were, was the, were you just uh, getting high? Were you robbing people? My, what was your thing? I was just, I was you on said, a, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, mine was, yeah, well, once you start doing drugs, everything's based when, off drugs. When did you start doing drugs, Matt? I don't remember the exact year. I was, tw I, th I know I was 21. That's actually kind of old to start doing drugs. I was, yeah, well, I grew up playing soccer and I played baseball at Mission Hills Little League. I probably could have gone pro, but I chose to be a tagger and a gangbanger and smoke crack and exactly yeah. crack i chose sepulveda <laughs> over everything yeah now, now um, where was the first time you ever got that bing in the ears and oh i was i was in a 1986 luxury sport monte carlo with my homeboy chubbs little boy and silent i was in the front seat my boy chubbs was driving silent and boyer in the back seat and i it was just you know like i hadn't even smoked a cigarette a joint really You're virgin i just uh i mean i'm sure i might have done something else we were talking today but this was the moment where like I, my homeboy chubbs had been in my ear like clumsy that was i don't like to repeat that don't don't, <laughs> yeah, don't worry my, my boy's like hey fucking will you knock it off and just try this and i finally sit here give it to me man the first time you smoke crack, man, I could hear a rat fart two blocks over. Oh, Everything was crystal freaking clear at that moment. For those few fucking seconds. For those seconds. about 45 solid seconds, life was perfect. Oh, and my life went to shit within a one-year period. I was barefoot on Sepulveda walking around. Yeah, I was quick. walking around Columbus Street and or actually Langdon sucked. Langdon was really violent. It, it sucked getting crack on Langdon. They try you could get killed just even they buying. Didn't, crack. They didn't have good uh PR people. No, they didn't <laughs> have good relations. business. They didn't have good public retail, relations. No. Yeah, yeah. No, you you get robbed and beaten up just uh, for trying to buy crack. Uh, Customer uh, service is out the window on yeah, Langdon yeah, in the nineties. Yeah. Shout out to Langdon. Yeah, yeah, please work on your people skills. <laughs> your yeah. people skills. Good <laughs> lord. Yeah, so we I had to stay barefoot on like Vincent Town and Columbus Street over there between like Rain and You were one of those. Bro, that's how bad. I traded a Rolex. A yacht master, about seven thousand dollar Rolex. I'll never forget a real one. A real one. A real one. Giving it because, mind you, at that time I was almost playing. I was playing sports, still gang banging, selling drugs. Had two jobs, about to leave to the U.S. Navy, and I, I had a. I traded a Rolex for a twenty piece, and I smoked. And I'll never forget being happy to get that twenty piece from Limon from Vincent Town. I never forget that little Paisa's name. I love that dude. <laughs> Bless Limon. Shout out. I hope, man, one day. Man, you owe me a taco. Hey, but talk to people about how that Sepulveda North Hills area was in bro, those days. That in was the like, 90s? It was Sepas back then. Sepas, yeah. It wasn't, it no, wasn't, no, no, yeah, no. No, it had already turned over. No, Sepas was previous, a little before. Yeah, it was Sepas. To, you got TJ Locos on Roscoe, MS on Roscoe. You got Columbus Street, Vincent Town in the middle, off right, and then you got Langan. And, and you got Haskell on the backside, kind of adjacent above the 405. That Sepulveda area for us was treacherous. Then you had all of yeah, the uh, Blight Street up there. Blight Street had just moved over yeah. into Panorama City a little bit more right. off of Blight Street. Yeah. Yeah. So it was insane, bro. That that was a bad area. Yeah. People don't know. they Half of those streets were closed. They had blockades. They put K rails they in put, this. You couldn't yeah, you could. If, it was actually Blight Street that had Blythe the first and, gang injunction. Yeah, Blight and Columbus here. Street both had the, the yeah. blockades that were, if you went in, they would make you forcefully turn your car around to drive back out. Yeah. Yeah. They couldn't get out. There would be only one way in, which they didn't know. It made it more dangerous for people going in there. Yeah. It, yeah. No, that place was, it was like something out of the wire. How you watched the yeah, show, The Wire? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was something it out was of The like, Wire. It was just something out of like a, a, a made-for-TV movie back then. It was dangerous. And I'm talking rain or shine, Monday through Sunday. Oh, yeah. Holidays included Turkey Day, yes. uh, Christmas, New Year's. They're selling crack, homie. And they got they have shifts. <laughs> they got a crew that comes oh, on yeah. in the evening yeah. that shuts down at 1 a.m. And that 1 a.m. crew comes on like a Denny's like a Denny's serving roll. Now, they're, how, they're done in the morning. Are we talking post-Teen Angels magazine? Or We're talking uh, right it's after Teen right Angels. Right after, yeah. Right after, yeah, right yeah. after yeah. Teen Angels. Yeah. Um, and it, it it was it was like that. Uh, I want to know your take on, because I had a few homies that were same yeah. same. Same boat as you, doing yeah. the same exact shit yep. over there, right? 
how did you guys kind of maneuver in all those different hoods? They weren't really tripping on you guys? or Well, because they put their money. They, Columbus Street, Langdon still gangbang and made money. Vincent Town and Columbus put their money over everything. At that moment, when you're on there, they're look, you're a customer. And that's they how that's how. You, no, right. that's how that hood stayed out of so much trouble in the system because they paid, from what I remember, they paid a lot of. A lot of that money. I'm talking, we're, we're millions of dollars went through oh, that. I, I'm sure. Millions well, of I dollars. I remember the LA Times had done an article. Um, I don't know if I was in prison or still in yeah. the county at that time, but that was like the most centralized, like crack oh, selling. Yeah. Well, and the cops. In LA County. The cops wouldn't arrest the dealers. The cops would pull up and arrest the person that they just watched buy dope. They'd pull you over because they don't want to stop the progress down because that takes away from cop jobs too. Again, this is the era of crash unit. And they're arresting the people buying it. They're never stopping the people selling it. Oh, it was it was insanity. Yeah, man. it was insanity. It was insanity. So, uh, the last trim you did, how much time did you end up doing? I did twelve years and six months. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. And what was that for? It was a kidnap, uh, home invasion, two counts of criminal threats, and a felony vandalism, and I think an assault. Nothing but major. Yeah. <laughs> Regular shit. Reg, just you know, it was a fir- it was a <laughs> Thursday <laughs> afternoon. Yeah, it was a Thursday day. afternoon. Nothing Mind major. you, I had just been out ninety eight days from doing three years. I was only home ninety eight days. You're on good runs. Yeah, well, I was I was high. I was trying to get sober, and I got in an argument with somebody, and I went. And, long story short, kicked the door in to help my friend get out of a house in a trap house in Santa Clarita, which is not a good place to commit crime ever. Oh, geez, ever no, don't no. don't ever go to Santa Clarita and commit crime. Don't and, go nowhere uh, and commit crime. Huh? No, yeah, just <laughs> yeah, don't go, don't go nowhere. Yeah. But if you did, <laughs> but, if you did, but right. don't do Santa Clarita. Hypothetically Creed. speaking, hypothetically, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I and I fought it in the county for 18 months, and I got everything knocked down. Eventually, they rolled me with the criminal threats and the felony violence because everything else was wobbler cases back then right. the ones they could run me on were those ones they had me dead to rights and i did a long time i got sentenced to nine i got involved in uh, and i turned it into 12 years and six months how uh, what were you getting high on back then meth so you i got- eventually got off the crack by me uh when i was in prison on my first term my mom moved to santa Cruz, so i go up there and i start hanging out with some more white boys less gangster white boys than we have in the valley santa Cruz has a whole nother crew of right there's more skinheads out in santa Cruz than there is like regular white boys like us that grew up with homies okay so i hung out with a few of them and i one of them i have to say rest in peace travis he passed away but he was fortunate enough to get me on meth <laughs> to get me off of crack. Now, you will probably wonder why I say shot out. Well, because to get off crack at that moment, I was so excited to be off of crack cocaine and now to actually keep some belongings instead of trading all my belongings. So the, at the time, you thought meth was helping you. Oh, I thought it was amazing. Yeah, it was, it was beautiful. Yeah. There was pigeons flying and, out of my ass. It, instead, yeah. of, instead of the 40 second high, you yeah. had that fucking eight hour high. I could have sex. I could paint the house. I could work on a car. You know what I mean? I could collect craft supplies from Walmart. Yeah, yeah. I had a shoe collection. You know. You know, I got six cars in a yard that are being worked on in different states. You know, uh, things have now changed. You're, you're, I, you're working out world peace. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm collecting for the homeless, you know, everything. all that, all oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, yeah, bro. meth was fun in the beginning, and you get about a year out of it before it turns your life to insanity so, so as well. Meth gives yeah. you a little more time than A little crack more is. grace period. Crack, you had about a good one week, and you're fucked. Good uh, one week, you're fucked. Now, meth, you now, got a little Are long. you smoking meth at this time? Or you, you know what's funny? When I stopped smoking crack... Again, my homeboy got me on meth to help save me. It did give me a grace period, but I jumped from smoking crack to slamming meth. I joined a whole new bracket in that moment. Now, Now, once you've injected a drug, there is literally no going back. Every drug from this moment forward, I've put ecstasy in a needle. Whatever drug I get, coke, heroin, meth, it doesn't matter. It all goes in a needle. Because once you've done that road... Nothing. You won't waste your time doing Once nothing. Once you go else. needle, you never go back. There's no. It's a waste of time. I Anything else is a waste. The cop on the joint too told me like, that's why I don't like Yeska. That, that shit it clogs my cancel. artery right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He yeah. 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 Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. oh shit. Yeah. How? I mean, I I I've smoked meth. You know, had a good time. Yeah. Had bad times, but yeah. I've I've never like I looked at the needle. I'm like, dude, I I could only imagine how the fuck that high is gonna be because meth itself is fucking pure octane. It's pure fucking yeah. adrenaline. Yeah. So how do you go from that to being like, all right, fuck it, let's get this needle and I was just so Your homie just told me. I it was to just you? no, he gave it to me. I was just so happy to be able to do something and get high and function rather than being a dirtbag. Stuck on it, stuck. Yeah. That was more important to me than really realizing it. Wait a minute, Matt, you're putting a needle in your arm. Yeah, that's insane. I was just like, I was just so happy to not be filthy and dirty and embarrassed. <laughs> Homies wanted to hang out and talk to me again. Oh, because you were that Well, I turned I went from being an uh, uh, an honor roll gang member selling drugs coming out of the U.S. Navy to a dirtbag crackhead. You know, like I went from being a pretty cool superstar in the hood to this dude is someone like like you, 
They want to check me every week because I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm trading shit. I'm stealing from you. I'm stealing from you. You're the dolphin in the hood. Yeah. yeah. You're the dolphin in the hood. Mind you, see, my, and I can't count how many, like, we had a bunch of homies that I've seen drugs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Destroyed. Steals yeah. Destroyed. Yeah. And it yeah. happened to my, and now in my, in Diablos, while you were away, it happened to, it infected probably 30 of us, 30 of our top gunners. That awesome. Our main crew of hitters at one time was all removed by crack. Shit. It took all of us down to, like, right when the green light was ending, we're all shot out on crack. Yeah, so we're all, and then mind you, now we're all trying meth. We're all, we've all been shot out to the wind at this point. We're all going our own ways in the system, you know. And I'm, and I'm well involved in the more of the white world because of my political choice. Right. I still represent Diablos. Always do. It's big on my stomach and nine inch letters across the stomach. But I've gotten more politically involved with the whites and trying to beat a drug addiction that is really consuming me. And I mean, that's that's what's consuming everybody nowadays, man. Yeah. If you, if you look yeah. in the streets, I mean, yeah, but it ain't what we did, Gil. Yeah, yeah. This I guy, don't know what this. This shit guy's is. a perfect example yeah. of somebody. Who, I mean, you literally just came out of the time machine. Wow. You yeah. li you yeah. literally just came out of the time machine. For when you came out here, yeah. it was all kind of homies. The homies were looking sharp. The homies are dressed yeah. up. They're ironed. I mean, back they're still ironing up. Yeah. Yeah. They got the we we had the uniform. And, yep. we, and we had the car uniform. And we had a style. We had a style. A style. We, we had the Regals. We had the Monte Carlos. It wasn't. It wasn't really like the car shows. It was. You're, that's what the homies are pulling up in. Yeah. yeah, they're pulling mm -hmm. up and they're looking fresh. Yeah, and we don't have what we have now. How how does that make you feel now? You go to all these hoods and dude, there's tents everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um. That was like uh, you know <clears throat> things ended bad for so many people in the '90s. But I remember that driving down Laurel Canyon and just everybody just Ben Davis top to bottom yep. crease down like. Just that that whole culture, like yeah. I love it, you know, I love it. Um, when I came out, I actually proled to Sixth and Union in downtown LA uh, to a, a transition house called Beacon House. Oh, all yeah. all ex lifers in there. Oh shit! It's the epicenter of tents, fentanyl. Like yeah. talk about a shell shock. My first trip out when I got there was to the liquor store and back, and then you just you know the GR office and. Yeah. Uh, like the things that I that I've seen, I can't believe it. I mean, it's shocking if you've been out here forever. It's, so just imagine, bro. I have a huge. I think we've. I mean, I'm I'm really super. Like I'm a recovering addict. I'm an ex gang member, but I'm a hundred percent against this tent generation. I I remember my homies would check me when they could catch me. I'm getting checked. <laughs> there's none of this in in when you can catch me. I'm getting checked. But there's none of this doing drug culture in front of women and children. None of this running around with no clothes on. None of this living in tents and masturbating in public. And uh -huh. the shit that I've seen makes me sick. Well, I feel we need just a series of construction bulldozers to just, we have to help get rid of it. You're, you're the perfect guy for me to ask these questions because yeah. people think that, you know, that I'm talking down on people who do drugs and I'm talking, you know. Ask me, because I, I love this topic. Yeah. I'm passionate so, about it, but I come from a place of just common sense. So, and that's. You that's have so to common. alleviate all your hippie, your loving your ideals. Your this is ideas, a, yes. This is a serious thing that's yes. affecting children. It's affecting your mom, Everybody, my mom, his mother. It's affecting his family. This is not Everybody. okay. Forget this woke bullshit. So, yeah, I say this. I say that the majority of people living in the tents are drug addicts and people will fucking flip their wings. No, all the time. nine ninety nine percent of them are drug addicts. So I, I just went um to Skid Row. What was that? About a month and a half yeah, ago. Oh, for so, yeah. Um I took a tour through there. Somebody walked me through there. I couldn't walk ten steps without somebody um seeing somebody who's offering housing, who's offering uh -huh. um needles, who's uh -huh. offering any kind of resources. So and I asked the guy who had lived in a uh, Skid Row for a while, he goes, if if you're on Skid Row longer than four days, it's because like you're choosing to now I have empathy, like, yes. for these people. Like, I get it. Like, I feel for these people. Like, it well, tugged down my heart going through there, and it, it changed my perception a lot. But the resources are there. Like, what, what incentive do I have? If I'm a heroin addict and I'm using every day, what incentive do I have to get off drugs when you're handing me my needle? My, my, my dope is right here. Thank you. Um, they're offering that housing. Part. They drive up. I'm able to jump in the shower. Like, they're, like you got to That's suffer. what they're I'm calling harm. Re they're calling it harm reduction, and I'm bullshit. against that. It's, it's enabling. Enabling. Thank if you're you. the I reason, see, harm see being because look, I, I had a I thing it. we were trying to propose to get maybe, oh, excuse me, get maybe passed. I have a, a surefire tax-free way to help all of our people who are working because we might all be gang members, but we've also now joined Watch the out, workforce. Karen Bass. Matt's coming. Hey, Matt's hey, coming for your job. Hey, we, we've all gotten sober. Uh, we're still from the Valley and gang members, but we pay taxes. We, it's a part of growing up now. I have a way to save all of our taxpayers' money. If you stop showing up in all these groups to give needles, deodorant, water, food, pets, they have pets, bro. Yes. Who's giving these people pets? They're bringing pet food for them. 
It's enabling if you the shit stop, out of them. If you stop, if we were to, let's just, let's just focus on the, the skid roll. If we made it illegal for all of these groups to stop providing resources, these people would leave. They're there because they've gotten accustomed to people bringing them what they want. Yes. Behind every great addict is a great enabler. Yeah, bro, I'm a, I'm a master manipulator, bro. Yeah. I could, t- I, I could it. sell ice to Eskimo when I was smoking hey, crack. That's what people don't understand. No, when I talk and to- I'm a drug addict. You have to stop helping them. And I've got a lot of homies that are drug addicts. Yes. And I still see them. They're still my homies. They're and I tell them I love them, but that's all yes. I got for you. You yes. got no money. You got no food. You got nothing. When yes. you're ready, though, I'll be here. Yes. yes. When you're ready, I'm here with my arm. I'll bring you home and I'll get you in treatment. And they're not bad people trying to get no. good. They're sick people trying to get well. They're not the yes. person you know they are not know. temporarily the people you know yeah. you ha- the only solution is to ignore them until they ask for assistance I'll in con- rehab or help yes con- if i'm gonna give anything you this, else I is enabling and, and and to watch this with the tents it's it's not fair to the rest of the world no it's not it's not i it's not i my proposal is they get i mean for the money they've spent they spent 10 billion dollars in three years yeah we could have built some structures out in like i went to adelanto this last yeah. week out or somewhere like towards the desert actual structures where right this is this house is ten thousand heroin addicts this house is ten thousand meth addicts yeah. this house is ten thousand this actually have doctors there actually have police there well actually, the problem is that they don't want it because, because when there comes with structure that comes with structure and accountability they want to live free yeah but this is how you do it now you start forcing those loitering laws. Hey, you got a ticket. Yeah, loitering hey, laws. Yeah. And then once, all right, no, you're not going to the county jail. You're going to rehab camp. Like, fuck, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Ooh, that's a we good. We start. No pushing. more county jail. No rehab county camp. Jail. You go to rehab camp. You And if they, okay, you went there for a month. You came back out. Hey, you're back busted. And this time, again. 60 days. You got drugs. Yeah. Now you're going for six months. You're going to re- until. Wow, hey, I didn't even. That's amazing. I'm tired of going to rehab camp. How much money are they blowing? We're chasing the dragon and they're yeah. chasing the dragon. So we're just doing a circle. We're blowing it. Yeah. We make fucking facilities that yeah. actually. And you have the doctors, you have the cameras. You, we're, we're throwing so much money at yeah. this with zero accountability. Yeah. We need accountability. And you guys are the exact face for it because. I mean, yeah. you're, you're a former drug addict. You're a shooting this gra- shit. Yeah. Right? So they can't sit there and tell you, oh, you're just a sellout, man. No, but, tell me, oh, you're well, just I, but I get that. I get that a lot because I speak just like you do. I tell people, no, the only solution is to ignore them. Yeah. You can't give them anything. Don't feed the bears. Don't Exactly. Don't, you feed, don't the feed the bears because then the bears are outside every <laughs> night. Wow. You can't do that. Right? And then before you know it, there's 70 bears and they have tents. And where do you think they're getting these new tents and these Bluetooth speakers on all of our tax dollars? Yeah. Hey, bro, they, they're they getting paid. Grills and hot they, pots bro, and I saw them. They're living on the freeway in Sun Valley off the five with where they have grills. They have oh, mood oh, they, lighting. They got two story up there, homie. Bro, boy. they have lights on the freeway. <laughs> Dude, come on. They're, they're they're planting gardens. It's insane. Yeah, and the thing is that the cops the cops can't do anything because they, they were told to stand down. I've they heard were, they've, they and were, they don't want the filthy people in the were, county jail. Well, they were told to stand down. Well, the reason they let the reason you have so many people out here is because a lot of those people will be in the county jail. Yeah. Before. But that's what I'm saying. Get the money, throw them in facilities. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the standing down doesn't work. One of the saddest things I'm going to say, but it's a reality, so I'm going to say it anyway, and people are not going to like this, but but the cold, hard reality of this situation is nine and a half and 10 of those people are not going to make it back into the real world. Yes. Nine and a half and 10 of them are so mentally messed up from the drugs, oh, from, the dope. from the dope. The dopes yeah. that out there, it's not normal dope. We don't need to touch where it's coming from, but it ain't coming from most of us. So these people are so far gone, it's unfortunate but they're probably not coming back. Well, that's and eventually thing. we need to deal with the hard fact of it's time to just clean and house. Whatever that dope does, it like bends their spine because nobody in downtown that's that, stands up straight. They're well, like, it's that it's the fentanyl everywhere. mixed with that trank stuff that eats your yeah. skin. Yeah, like, oh, that trank stuff. Bro. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, they're, they're selling their it's, soul. It's they're- unfortunate, but eventually we need to stop wasting money and realize, okay, wait, they're not coming back. Yeah. Make say it's your goodbyes and make an it's amends. A reality, bro. It's, the fact is, it's time to shut the program down. It, it, it's a reality. They should yeah. for, for those people. There should be where they get mental fucking wards. Because well, they sh- yeah, and we don't have money. yeah, we're wasting money and we don't have the space to house these and, people. And, and it's become just a fun for like a lot of these. And there is some great nonprofits. Don't get no, me there wrong. is, but a lot of them are just making money uh, off these people's the misery. CEOs making yeah. three hundred thousand dollars. We had an idea. Oh, I'm sure that's a big money game. It's huge. Yeah, no, it's, it's huge. So we had an idea to these people that. We were doing a photo shoot with, uh, uh, I think, Estevan and Deftone. We were yeah. at LA River. These companies, they call them under the guise of harm reduction, go around giving out needles. Number oh, one, fuck. you give me a needles when I'm using drugs, you're not leading them to safety. Normal society doesn't give a fuck about the spread of disease because they're not banging hookers and fucking slamming meth. Right. So normal society doesn't care about the spread of disease. 
So we're telling these groups, you want to, you want to go, you want to go out there and hand out bags, of needles. Well, do us a favor then and put your name on it. Put your company, put your name on the needle. So we know where these people are getting this from. Number one. But what's happening is when we're doing, remember, remember they're throwing bags of these at us. Yeah. We were on a photo shoot. Shit. These homeless people are throwing needles at us, uncapped That's chemical warfare. So I'm being attacked by homeless people on free needles that they're giving out that have been used. It's insane. Nah. It's insane, bro. It's, insa it's insanity. It's in and it's not fair for the normal people that didn't Thank choose that you, life. Matt. Thank Kids, you. women, uh, all these normal, our parents, it's not fair for no, them. No, it's not. But the thing is that the grown folks are not around anymore. The, no. the, 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 the loonies have taken over the asylum. Bro. And anything that you say like this, oh, you're just being insensitive. You're, you can't. I don't even care that I'm being insensitive. Yeah, My name's Mohawk you're... Matt. I'm, I don't care that I'm insensitive. I deal with reality. I don't know how much time I have left on this earth. And I'm not going to entertain like with the, with the one hot topic with the weirdo people. I'm not going to entertain what you think you feel you need to be yeah, called. I'm sorry. It's... I'm going to call you what you are, and I'm not going to entertain bullshit. Well, I'll, listen. To me, with that is like with the with the LGBTQ yeah. stuff, and, and I say this, and people always get it wrong. They're gangster, homie. They are pushing their agenda. If if, if they're the if, most famous people in the world right now, they're, they're the most. If if California or America was a prison yard, they're the ones putting the most work. Yeah, because they're making you. You're gonna talk to me like this. You're gonna say yeah. this to me. You're gonna put me in a movie. Well, let's you, keep it real. They're making some people, not me. No, but yeah. they're, no, they're they're, yeah, they're they're making the will of of the president. Yeah, you're which right. Is the most you're powerful right. guy yeah. in America. Yeah. They're making the will of that of yeah. the government bend to theirs. Yeah. And to me, is you want to call yourself Susie? Get your money, but you don't need to be going into the, the women's schools. restroom and the schools if, for if you're kids. A man. Yeah, you don't. You yeah. don't need. No, you, what the fuck does a drag have to do with having a kid perform or perform in front of kids? It well, makes he, no sense. Well, it's 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 pedophile it's shit. Grooming. I don't I don't want necessarily heterosexual shit taught to children, let oh, alone a guy not. dressed like a woman twerking. Yeah, it, that's it, insane. It, it's like us bringing Chippendales and having them go in front of the kids. There like, should be zero sexual of any spectrum zero, with brother. kids. Zero, that, zero. Yeah, at that age, it should be nothing. Nothing. Like, they like should be playing they handball. They should be learning how to play handball. Yeah. Yeah, Seriously. It, it, at that age, and now you got kids that are three years old transitioning. Man, kids Bro. have been having their their fairy tale land until they're you know kids will also think they're panda bears so am i supposed Thank to let you. my kid think he's a really believe he's a it's yeah. my it's your job as an adult if, to, to yeah. train them if I was not young, to allow I fantasy yeah i would identify it as like voltron back then i identified like as darth vader for <laughs> six solid months when i was a kid six solid months i thought it was darth vader let alone if i, I thought it was a girl i went to the bank and i said identify as rich can i get a loan then it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey so dude you came out you you came out the, i mean I'm glad you're out, but you came out kind of the wrong time. Huh? Out, it's an interesting, yeah. interesting <laughs> time. Hey, yeah, you can yeah. be a giraffe if you choose oh, yeah, to yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, so what was the... Uh, they asked me, too. Like, I remember I, I, I was feeling out something, and they asked what my pronouns were. Oh. And oh, I did. I, I genuinely did not understand, but I just, like, I told them I have adjectives, like, handsome and brilliant. Like, <laughs> give me adjectives. Like, it's like finding the app store. Yeah. What was the biggest <laughs> shock coming out here, man, in the real world? Oh, so far, man. because I'm sure there's still going to be more yeah, to yeah. come. Oh, he's got more to come, yeah. Fucking A. Yeah, it's so, yeah. like, I mean, you know, I'm still fresh out, so everything is still like a culture shock. But, um, wow. I, I, I would got to say the, the homeless situation. Like, really? Yeah, I'd got to say, like, the you, people you that are running that around much. the street. Yeah, like, when I went in, we had, like, maybe one homeless guy, that one guy. Yeah, but they were off the grid. They, when in yeah, our we day, always they, had We it. always yeah. had it, but they were not like this. We all had so a bubble. Bold. We're not on yeah, the corner so of Laurel Canyon. We're not on the like... corner of Laurel Canyon Victory with a tent, a Bluetooth speaker, and a barbecue. Yeah, half full. naked wearing wearing panties. Yeah. I was walking down myth. the sidewalk on Devonshire the other day, and they all screamed, get the fuck off my porch. And, like. <laughs> yeah, right there by the by Balboa in Devonshire? Across from Carl's Jr. Yeah, yeah, that's insane right yeah. there. Have you seen that? Yeah. Everywhere, bro. Right here on the 170, we got off on Victory. There was a naked chick there for, like, Four or five days, just walking around. And I've seen it where the cops will pull up and laugh and video it themselves yeah, with their cops, yeah. and the cops won't even arrest them. The cops are not stopping. Bro, I would get arrested for a nickel of marijuana. The yeah, cops are not stopping. Yeah. So let, let's phase into that portion. This is yeah. oh, this is a great conversation, man. I'm loving yeah. it, man. Crime and punishment. Yeah. I am the guy that believes that we need to get a little bit tougher. Not tough where you're throwing away the key, but where you're getting caught with the gun. Hey, man, you're going to go do a year in the county jail. Uh, you're going to... You're going to it be a cool off time. It'll be like, you know, that way you could think about what you're going to do, because I feel like they're letting people out too quick. They're not really yeah. charging. So what they're doing is they're emboldening young, especially young men. Well, our era is slowly coming back. Yeah, they're going to make the 90 era and the late 80 era come back if they don't get tougher. Maybe they're not as tough as they were, but I agree. You need a cool off period. You need, a cool -off you need period, to right? go. To, you need to realize what happens when you go to jail, because with jail comes structure. Uh -huh. You know, I tell people this a lot, like a lot of the prison time that I did. 
There's a lot of bad shit. I've saw some shit that I can never unsee. At the same time, I also learned a lot of really good things. I learned how to contribute in a group. I learned how to play on a team. You learn how to follow rules. You learn how to mind somebody. You learn how to be clean and orderly. You learn how to, like you said, have a program and structure. I learned how to pay attention and show respect. I don't have to like your race, your gang. I don't have to like the color you're wearing, but I will respect you. Nice. And the that's next man, and the man next to me, you learn these things in jail that a lot of these kids that are that wearing structure. wearing Crocs and and sagging skinny jeans, thinking they're gangbanging with a gun hanging out their hip on every video, you're not really learning nothing because you ain't done no time. You could have a tattoo as big as you want across your body, that don't mean shit. You know, you need to you need to really learn how to be involved in a system that goes higher than your neighborhood and higher than you because there are bigger structures than that. Oh, absolutely. And you need to learn how to contribute to that group so you realize, wow. So this is an interesting question for you because you're literally the fucking ex-con who just got out of doing. I don't mean ex-con a bad way, but just yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But in, in the in the light of the conversation, you you are the ex-con who literally got out of doing 29 years for a hot one. What is your take on crime and punishment? So, um, you know, like I've said before, there are definitely people that belong in prison. Yes. You know. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. The boogeyman is real. Yes. Like there are yeah. extremely yeah. dangerous people that I definitely wouldn't want in my neighborhood. But what I'm more concerned about is what happens after you um, go to jail. Because, you know, for the first, man, almost 15 to 20 years of my incarceration, there were no programs. There was any any opportunity to like better yourself. Um, it wasn't available. So once somebody does, you can't uh, incarcerate the problem away from somebody. You right. could put somebody in a box for twenty years, and they're going to come out ten times worse. You have to address the problem. Sure. So if a guy's gang banging, if he's getting caught with guns, and um, you know, living his life, going through his process, once you're incarcerated, you got to realize that there are other options. You know, you, you you're good enough. Like you're, you're special enough. Like, you know, you're an important human being and, um, you know, their change is possible. Like, which is ultimately, which is, which is my message. Cause you know, I, like I was a mess in every single way, but I'm a representation of like change is possible. What would you say? I haven't, uh, I have, I have many ideas actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, my other idea would be for kids, like how, when you were busted, um, 16 years old, 17 years old, yours is unique because it was a murder uh but if it's like you know assault with a firearm or robbing a place i think that there should be a pathway for young men and women to go to the service absolutely and when they that. do that like if you're out here assaulting people like i want to know where that anger is coming from where did you learn that it's okay for like you to run up and just like shove some steel to someone's temple and take what they've been working for yeah like take from their kids and their family so i want to like get to the root of it like why are you so what's missing in your life yeah in a prison visitor room, what you never see is a dad. That, that's the common mm. denominator. Mm. So, mm. like, mm. there's all these voids and there's gaps that, that need to be filled. Like, the people that are the loudest, the most rah-rah, those are the people that are in the most pain. Gil, that's actually great. You know, I did. I was in the Navy, and I, I volunteered. I, I didn't get to serve during wartime, but I did. I volunteered because my father did, my uncle did, my grandfather did. I feel one of the things I've been speaking out is because I, I, I love our country. I don't, like what's, I don't like what's happening, but I still love it. Yeah, the politics is different yeah, from the country itself, but, yes. But it's the people, and I feel like the reason our, our recruitment, we can't recruit anybody right now. We could definitely, what you said is amazing, We because a lot of these kids just need guidance. They need that structure. A lot of these kids could use some structure and some guidance, and as good as they can apply that to gang life, you could very easily it's, transfer that to the military especially life. Especially in the Chicano culture. Yes. We dude. have structure. We yes. follow structure. And that's what, you know, yeah. a lot of young homies, you, you were one of them. You go to yeah. jail, you go to the county, you go to prison, you're like, it's, you're it's falling an army. under, and you, you're it's actually, an army. You, you, you like it. You enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. But why not enjoy it where you're getting paid every month for it? Yeah, and you're, you're getting, getting to shoot big guns. 401k. Yeah. Getting, right now, it's Instead of coming out of doing your 39 years, you'd be a fucking colonel coming out making with a pension, with a pension that's, that's paying you $300,000 a year. Yeah. Yeah. That's the yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and I think that's missing in the, in the system because we should be sending these kids to real fucking boot camps where you have yeah. real guys from the army, real yeah. guys from the Marines. And that way you can weed out the ones who, you know, some of their attitudes just ain't going to make it. Yeah. But I'm a firm believer that it wouldn't even eat. Let's just remove the, the troubled kids too. It, it wouldn't hurt anybody to make like Israel does. Everybody, that's a great every, thing. Israel makes everybody serve. I think from 17 to one 19, year. is one it year. one year? You okay. Have to serve you have one to year. serve one year in the military. You have to, it does nothing, Women nothing bad at all. Women and men. It's amazing. Don't they, it I is amazing. That in Korea too. There's a couple countries I think Korea. that do it. Yeah, right. I mean, because I remember the BTS yeah. guys had to yeah. stop their tour. <laughs> the BTS. Yeah. Mm. Uh, don't tell me you're watching BTS in the joint, homeboy. Was, yeah. 
It was on TMZ. <laughs> if you had a, uh, all, you all, have all, a up the, all up in the shoe dancing BTS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It was on TMZ. They like had to stop their tour to, uh, um, you know, yeah. shout out to K-pop. Man. Uh, <laughs> damn. Now, now you, uh, hey, what's up with the, what's up with the, talk to me about the, the Solon company, Karna. Solon. Talk to us, homeboy. Solon helped get me sober. Really? Yeah, I was, when I was at my lowest, when I finally quit and I wasn't able to get high anymore, um, my mom knew that I liked, I had bought a few Sullen t-shirts. What, what year and was this around? 2017, 18, okay. maybe, maybe 18. Um, I had finally hit rock bottom. My mom, when I finally knocked on that bedroom door and said, mom, come get me out of here. I'm ready. Cause I reached a place where it was, finally. I was, I was broken. I had been praying to Jesus and Odin. Cause I believe in, I have a a struggle with my spirituality. I believe that Jesus died for my sins, but I also believe in my heritage and my Viking history. And I, I had been praying to, with that. I had been praying to both of these people, just remove this from me. I don't know how. And then when it finally happened, I was too dumb to realize that they weren't allowing. I did 17 shots of meth and heroin my last day. Not one of them worked, including the vein in my penis. I hit every vein I had, the oh, vein on my dick. You were one of those, fool. Well, you were one of those. Yeah. Oh, hey, no, nothing was working. And I, didn't, I was too stupid to realize my prayers had been answered. The homies had already said, hey, that's a wrap, dog. You're done. You're done. Nothing you're going to do is do nothing but cause more schizophrenia in your, and mental instability in your life. And when I finally realized that I knocked on my door and I said, mom, I'm ready. Come get me the fuck out of here. My little old mom ran up those stairs. She goes, you're ready? And she helped me. And, she, and every Friday, I had, to, I had to go on a waiting list to get into treatment. She put me on a waiting list to get to rehab, to detox first. And I remember every Friday, my mom would bring me a bag of some hats and some socks of sullen. She goes, here, next Friday, I'll see you. Just make it to Friday, baby. And I made it. And then at nine months, my mom gave me my last bag. And she said, now come get me something and get that year. That's right. And I've been sober brother, five years. On May 18th, it's great, five years. Brother. And this company helped me get clean. And I've, I built my way. I met the owner, Uncle Jeremy, and I've been busting my ass. I work for them. Social media, modeling, networking, recruiting. I do sales yeah, how did for them. you hook up with them? I bumped into Uncle Jeremy at a music. Now, who's, who's Uncle Jeremy? Uncle Jeremy's the owner. Great dude. One of my best friends. An okay. amazing guy with a great vision. And uh, he built this company from the ground with Color Crimes, who's also a tattoo artist. So they combine tattoo artwork from around the world. Very they involve cool. all cultures, all ideals, all people, all different types of styles of artwork and all colors, and it goes on clothing. And you guys just kind of clicked up real good when you guys yeah, met. Well, we met real good, and I, and I started taking my own little weird-ass gay selfies in the mirror, wearing the clothing. <laughs> Eventually, I, I he, yeah. He's very my, photogenic. He's very photogenic. My, yeah, yeah <laughs> my pictures picked up his interest, and I... I got hooked up with a couple of photographers and they started using me and then, it, and then it's grown into what I'm doing now. And so. next to Pro Club, Sullen is the second most worn clothing in, in the penitentiary right now. Really? It is. Yeah, yeah, well, we have a yeah. contract with, with the catalog. Package yeah. catalog. Yeah. Basic, just gray long sleeves and t-shirts and shorts and socks and stuff. Really? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's yeah. The homies are buying the yeah. Sullen. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's dope, yeah. man. Now, yeah. uh, now, how does it feel to be a model, homeboy? Huh, you could put that in your resume. It actually. was a little I'm surreal. A, I'm a model. It was a little. <laughs> hey, being a, being a being a junkie and a convict to being a model at my age too. It's that's amazing. Uh, it's amazing, yeah. But now it seems like it doesn't seem it is. You're on a mission to tell your story. Why? Well, because. Well, I love the valley. Number one, the valley is like it's in my profile. SFV. I mean, I was born. I, I tell people this. I was I was made here. I was broken here, and I was rebuilt right here. Nice. On the east side of the valley. Man. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and uh, I, everything I've done, good, bad, indifferent, that stands out, everything has started here and ended here, and I, I will have it end here. And I want to be a good representation of our home. We've all made mistakes. A lot of us have gone through shit in prison on the streets. None of it matters. It matters what we're doing right now. Absolutely. And I got a lot of people that are still getting high that I really want to help. And I use everything I do with this company for, and without the company on my own to be a good example and to work hard and to help all of our people in the Valley. That's dope. Um, hell yeah. yeah. Vallero is humble. Yeah, Vallero all the way. And you know? what, what message do you want to convey out there that you can, you know, tell to a, you know, a young guy, a young homie from the hood that, you know, is, there's a lot of, and people don't understand this because they don't understand the gang world. There's a lot of guys that really, really think they want to do what you just did. They want to go catch a hot one and go do 10 or 20 or 30 years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what would you tell that guy? What would you tell yourself speaking and going back when you were a young kid before you even got into all that gang stuff? I mean, I realized that some, there was nothing um, anybody could have told me. I had to go through that experience. Like I was I was a knucklehead, like to the highest degree. But when I do speak to youth, um, I definitely don't preach because, um, you know, They'll say like, "Oh, what's up, OG?" I said, "I'm an original youngster." You know, what I mean, that's what that's Stop what I am. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah. um, I just want to explain to them, yeah, um, I, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you that there are moments of excitement and all that, but they're, they're fast and they're few. Like the reality is it that you're going to spend a lot of time alone. Like th there's so many painful moments. Like yeah. you lose your family members, like you drag your family um, hundreds of miles up these grapevines to visit like you know Dude. you have um you know your friends turn around and, and point the finger at you um and tell on you who like pledge their undying loyalty to you um you know you watch your your best friends get killed like sometimes you got to hit your your best homie because he's from your car so it, beneath all the glamorization like it's, it's a painful hard difficult oh. ugly world you know and 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 i you know, 29 years, like I felt every sitting in those cells, every kind of emotion, pain, hurt, like whatever you can imagine, like I've experienced it. Were you ever angry at yourself? Yes. Hey, for years, you know, um, cause I didn't know what, like why I kept doing what I was doing. You know, I couldn't imagine myself outside of, of, of this lonely persona that I had created. Right. Let, let me ask you something. I had a conversation with one of my homies who who's, he's been out for about five years now. He had a life sentence and he finally got paroled. Um, kind of the same story as you, you know, was with it, was, you know, with the activities, all that stuff. And then like towards the last, I think, three to five years, he just kind of said, you know what? Um, yeah, I, I want to get out. So he went to the, you know, talked to the rep and pretty much told my homie, you know what? I'm still down, but I'm just kind of, you know, and the, the homies were like, all right. Yeah, so when when the laws came into play. Uh, but, but the question I was going to okay. ask you, I'm sorry. He told me that he would have to bite his tongue a lot because there was a lot of lifers trying to kill his date. That he would sit there literally be in line sometimes. He was like, you're a punk fool. Like, mm -hmm. And this was looking like these motherfuckers. They're like, There's homies that, you know. Were, were, yeah. were, did you ever run into any guys that were doing a lot of time that were kind of jealous that you were programming now and they're trying to fuck your date off? Um. I yeah, there, there, there. I wouldn't say like it was prevalent, but um, you know, when you do decide to make that change, and when you choose like a, a Narcotics Anonymous meeting over like a yard, you know, there's people they're gonna have something to say, and um, I, I, I chalked it up in my head to saying this like, fuck, bro, it's your lucky day that I'm not you know, like who I used to be, but I would immediately refocus my attention to my family. This is what I'm doing it for. Like, fuck what you're talking about. And like, but sometimes they would trigger me and I'm, get your paperwork. Like, let's stack it on this day room table and go one for one. Or like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I got more fucking like write ups. Talk to me when you yeah. catch up. Yeah. Like, then you have like years in jail. Real you paperwork. Know? I've spent more time on the shitter than you have in prison. Yeah. Period. Hey, tell them what you, tell them what you told me that I like to copy and use. Or you want me to say it? What's that? Well, he said this thing one time, kind of banking off what you said, where what would you tell a kid coming up? And I remember he said it the first day he got out, and I've memorized it kind of. We can't tell you, like he said, you're probably going to not listen to us, and I can't yeah, tell you. Likely. That scared straight shit don't work. Yeah, no. None of that works. I can't tell you what not to do. Let me tell you what happens when you do this, because mm. you're probably going to do this, so let me let you fill that toolbox with what you need. Let me let you know what it's like to be in a court tank with 90 other dudes you got to take a shit. Let me let you know what it's like to sit in a holding cell for four days on the floor eating peanut butter and jelly. Let me let you know what it's like to wait for processing and wait for a phone call. Let me let you know all these things so when you do this, you're prepared mentally and you're not hit yeah. with, the, with, the, with the surprises. Or like telling like, and the, and the worst part of yeah. it is, is what I'm telling you right now is not going to sink in until about 10 years from now yeah. when like you get yeah. the letter, you get that phone call, that mom passed away. Yeah. Or, and you're in the fucking hole and you can't even get access to call your family. Yeah. Or like, you know, like yeah. I know homies like that. There was a home invasion done on their family. Like, and, and what are you going to do? You're sitting here in a box. Yeah, yeah. You can't even get, you can't even ask for a, Be for a phone call. For Be prepared for those moments because they will come. And when it gets difficult. And when you stop hitting store every up. week. Yeah. Don't, don't go tappy now. Like see it through to the end. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's deep. Yeah. Um, let's uh, switch uh, another one here. Swifty Blue, homie. Swifty oh, Blue. <laughs> we, were, we were talking about the stuff that was going on with Swifty and all that. And what I, I try to <laughs> remind people, he's 27 years old. That's yeah. the one with the, with the, yeah, with the yeah. grill, the silver grill. Yeah, with the with guns. The, all, with, always with the guns. With the, with the guns. But they all show the guns, fool. They all I mean, show the guns. What have we said? That's a, this is a different era. Yeah. I, I, uh, again, I want to refer. My homeboys would check me if I'm ever just holding a gun on a video. But they all do it. It's just, I, that, it's it's just a that different Swift, era. It's just that it's, Swift is a rapper, and he you see him more than anybody else. But you can go on YouTube. You can put any yeah. gang. You can put uh, you can put Florencia. You can put yeah. 18th Street, and they're all doing it. It's like they're banging for the gram, oh boy. Yeah, that's that's a again. That's a, uh, it's a different era. I wasn't raised or raised. Uh, I wasn't trained that way. 
In fact, my gun would only you'd be seeing it. Only only reason you're going to see my gun is if you're going to see fire it's from the pop muzzle. Off. Yeah, for yeah. I'm sure. not. I don't just yeah. have guns for videos. I definitely don't have people on a video threatening people. But they're hey, but you got you got homies that are older doing the same shit towards them. Yeah. That's that's again and, that's yeah. that's a different. I don't understand that lifestyle. My, yeah, my perspective yeah. on the whole thing, like I'm, I'm new, I'm new, so this is like part of the culture shock. But yeah. what you're doing is you're basically creating a visual transcript for the district attorney to yeah. use against you in court. Should something happen, and let me tell you something. One thing I know, just like what we just said with the kids, let me give you some tools to go in that box you're going to carry. You can only show a gun so long before a real motherfucker shows up and yeah, and, and calls you sure. on that gun and might have one. For sure. And eventually, then what are you going to do? Then you're your career is over. But at the same time, I can also, like, you know, our generation, there weren't the cameras and the YouTube yeah. and all that, but, like, yeah. you know in the moment when you're, like, with the homies and you're feeling yourself. So, yeah. and, you know, so, I like, I, I don't, I'm not casting judgment on them. I would no. caution against it. Like, yeah. it's but, not going to turn out well. Like, but, how do you think this is going to end? On, but I will say this, though. I think it's easy for us to say because we're older now. You yeah. Know? It's always, for sure. It's yeah, always, for sure. It's always, like, for no, sure. because yeah. if you think about it, Teenager, which you brought up earlier. Teenager. We were on teenagers with the yeah. straps. Damn. Yeah. We, wow. we, we oh were, my God, you we did. Were, wow. We were on teenagers. Polaroid with the photos. Yeah. Polaroid photos. I with stand the, corrected. Like, wow. Damn, I do stand corrected. He's right. Right? I think my I think we had a couple homies. We had a couple well, photos yeah. of some Polaroids on Whittier Boulevard. I endorsed Holy it. Holy shit, damn. Yeah, I, got, I got a picture of uh, my actually my brother. Uh my brother's actually from Violent Boys, if you guys didn't know that. My brother, oh, no my brother from Island Boys, uh, rest in peace. Uh, mm -hmm. My my home, my homeboy Bob from Pacas, mm -hmm. my homeboy uh, Wino from Pacas, my aunt and my mom, and they're fucking with the rifle, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the deer hunting rifle, yeah, 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 <laughs> with yeah. the shotgun from Walmart that's this long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Full. yeah. So wow. yeah, we hey, we were taking okay. pictures with guns. Okay, my bad. I stand right? corrected. Yeah. yeah, as I'm saying, wow. it, to me, it's just it, it's it's a sad part of the reality. But okay. nowadays, it's just it's just much easier to get used and, and, and go to go to jail with that shit. Way right? more eyeballs on it. Yeah, like, I, I, yeah. I personally, when I got off parole, I'm just like, I don't even want to be seen with a pocket knife, let yeah, alone, I don't no. even need a pocket knife. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. when you've gone through certain things, you realize, I said this to, I was talking to Marcos from Cinemills. I said this, when you've gone through certain things, you realize the severity of those things. So you realize how careful you need to be. Yes. Like, I don't even carry a pocket knife because I know how I am. And I know in the heat of a moment, in a fight, I could stab someone. And then before you know it, that's life. So you, when you realize the severity of an object, you realize this object carries a lot of weight. And it can be used. So to even play with it, to me, someone who did gangs and the U.S. military, I feel like they're not toys. Right. And, and they're given yeah, and they're yeah. given with all the topics of gun control and all this shit. Guns aren't the problem. No, they're it's not. the wrong people playing yes. with the problem. Yes. Yeah. And they have access Too many wrong people have access to weapons. They shouldn't. Right. I, and I, I agree. Yeah. I, I think it should be a tougher background checks. To yeah. Get, psychological but, but, checks yes. as well. Major psychological battery of but tests. Like, it, like if you have, if you had guns for the last 20 years and you just automatically pass grandfathered in but yeah. for the new people coming in, this should yes, be a little bit should tougher. be way but, major tougher. Yeah. But then I also believe that like in California, I believe it'd be, it'd be better if people had like concealed weapon licenses to get it. Actually I'm okay. carry. As long as you deserve it, I don't have any problem with it. As long as you've shown that you're able to handle a weapon. Yeah, because if you're a criminal, you can get a gun, homie. That's not hard. Bro, I mean, I don't even, I'm an ex-felon. Right? I have a gun. I can't even have <laughs> a no legal one. Gonna yeah, there's nothing that's going to stop you, but I'm also not carrying it. To, I didn't bring it to the American Cholo show. Yeah, yeah. For, <laughs> let me pat these guys down real quick. Yeah. yeah. Hey, come I, see me. I <laughs> come, uh, hey, come see me. I heard also, <laughs> though, that in, in the joint, I was talking to one of the homies that did a lot of time and just got out. Um, he's like, fool, I There'd be, there's like where I was at. There was programs, but most of those fools are like hell no. They're 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 fucking up, so they get sent back to the cell, so they could be on the window looking at who's bringing dope. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, drugs have like hit the family tree, poisoned it pretty bad right? in there, you know. And it's it's sad. It's it, it's difficult because you see people that were one times really like reputable individuals, like the code is gone. Right. You know, it, it's all about that next shot. Um, but yeah, you're yeah, he he he's right. He's right. As far as you uh, depressurizing, because everybody that comes out of prison has to depressurize. Um, yeah. What has been tough for you, or has it been tough for you? Because you know, uh, you in the joint, somebody bumps into you. Excuse me, homie. You know, keep going. Yeah. Oh, here you could be the store. Some fucker just bumps me. Like fuck you. Who are you? And yeah. they keep walking. How, yeah. how have you? And it's happened. Yeah. Okay. How, uh, how have you dealt with that? I'm older, you know, and and. You know, I use my head. I try not to act on on emotion, but like I always look at the intention behind it. Like if you accidentally bump into me, no problem. Like if you step on my shoes, no problem. But if you're like walking by, like intentionally trying to do something, yeah, that you know. Yeah. Thankfully, that hasn't happened yet. But 
Yeah, like traffic and like, you know, getting honked at and flipped off. How about like, at work? Wow. wow. Um, things have been pretty well at work. Yeah, there's really been. Um, yeah, because I would get some guys. I remember one guy. I work in dog training. So most of my. Oh, that's most dope. Of my, most, most of my dogs don't talk shit. Back. That's it's all dope, love. Man. It's all love. I love dogs. I lost my dogs about a year and a half. My wife oh, still won't man. let me get my dogs, oh, man. man. She's like, she oh. can't go back to that heartache, man. But I had a I had a guy from Sanford that, that uh, I hired on the crew. This was years ago. Now he's doing his thing. Uh, and he came out and. He did about eight years, and he was a big, solid guy. And, yeah, dude, he want to fucking fight all the time. I'm like, yeah. hey, fool, this ain't the pinta. If somebody says, hey, asshole, grab this, but they're not telling you, like, you're a bitch, but they're saying, yeah. hey, yeah. hey, they're not telling you thank you, in other words. Hey, go grab that fucking bucket, take it over here. Yeah. yeah. And some, you know, it's almost like the American meme movie, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, look yeah. me in the eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can't do it. That's a hard transition for a lot of uh, a lot of people coming to prison, so I, that's why I was uh, curious. So they have classes to kind of help you guys yeah transition i mean you got narcotics anonymous alcoholics you got criminal gang members anonymous um which is a 12-step program to understand like the lifestyle addiction you have emotional intelligence like uh, all the resources to discover yourself to find out who you are like i became a man in there right um i i I became a man and i was taught like life lessons and principles by other convicts like grown men you know so um the opportunity is there in prison, anything you want is there if you're looking for it. Yeah. Anything. Good or bad. Good or bad. Yeah. You for know? sure. Well, I want to fucking say this was an amazing conversation yeah. with the two yeah. homies from the Valle, carnal. Yeah. Thank you, dog. And we got we got a, a cherry on top with this guy coming Cherry in. on top. <laughs> thank you, man. I appreciate yeah. it. I just want to wanna really thank you both for coming on. It's been yeah. a long time in the making. Yeah. Oh, wait. How the hell did you get Mohawk Matt? You got a Mohawk. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the one I got to ask. I'm not even sure I know this. So, (laughs) I had a, when I transitioned from like, you know. You transitioned? The uniform. Oh, no. (laughs) Well, look, I like to, I like to, I like to say my pronouns are giraffe and animal. Breaking news, Mohawk Matt transitioned. When I transitioned to (laughs) having to get, get comfortable after moving, having moved to Santa Cruz after paroling, um, you know the uniform changed a little bit. I'm able to relax now. I'm That's not. Right. I'm not in Frisco, Benz, and Cortez, or right. old school Chuck Taylors. Uh, I I was able to get more in touch with my punk rock roots, and uh, I grew a mohawk. Now, mind you, I was already at the point where my hair is thinning out, <laughs> so my hair didn't want to cooperate with the mohawk. It was just a hawk. It was just. It was a <laughs> half and then another. So I actually tattooed it on the head. Oh the shit! All I right. Had a mohawk tattooed on my head. I see that. And tattooed graffiti letters <laughs> that the homie drew for me. Mohawk yeah, Matt. There mohawk you go, brother. Yeah. Hey, so I want to appreciate you for coming on. Let people know where they can find you, Matt. IG, the whole shabam. You can boy. find me on Instagram, Mohawk Matt underscore SFV, Sullen Clothing, Sullen Family, uh, SoCal Tattoos in the Valley. Check us out. Uh, I have a Facebook. I think it's Matt, Matt Camerano. I'm not really as active on Facebook. I get in a lot of trouble on there. Um, <laughs> Uh, other than that, I'm 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 at events. I'm around. I'm 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 constantly at tattoo conventions, and I'm doing my best. If you if you have any trouble in sobriety, DM me. I got Dope, you. Man. I will spend time, as long as you're not hit me with some weird stuff, because I've had some weird stuff. I have no problem responding to any message from anyone if it, you need some help and you want to talk about recovery. That's right, yeah. Mister Lonely. I don't know if you want people to find you, but yeah. I'm sure people are going to look oh. for you because they're going to want that interview, brother. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at Free Bliss. F R E E B L I S S one. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to give purpose. Like I lived a, a life of destruction. I've, I've done a lot of things. And I'm trying to, I'm out here trying to make amends for that. Uh, if I can help anybody like the same thing, like message me and my life is about service, yeah. you know? Oh, fine. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And with that, Mr. Chris, you can get us out of here. This was a great, great podcast, man. Thank you guys for yep. coming, man. Thank you, dog. Buy your love, homeboy. Get us That's out of right, here. That's right, dog. Yes. <laughs>